So, oh, the other thing, um, I do usually have the, the due dates um, set for an hour before class. Um, for this class, it holds. I have a class immediately after that. There's a still due at 11, just so I can have time to actually download it. Um, but anywho, um, so again, assignments pretty much all due an hour before class, unless otherwise specified. Um, um, but yeah, so for this week, um, again, you're gonna find either a, like a click pen or a mechanical pencil. Um, nib or glass pens or like a wooden number two pencil do not count for this assignment. Please do not turn those in. Um, but um, basically what's going to happen is you're going to disassemble the pen. Um, you're going to take pictures of it before you disassemble it. Disassemble it, take more pictures of all the parts, uh, and then model like the whole pen. Inside and out, all of the pieces, like they should fit together. Um, and it's just like it's just like an exercise in detail and scale. Um, the pen should be to scale as well. Um, but yeah, um, I don't really care if you, so like it was suggested that you go out and like buy a pack of the same type of pen so that you can disassemble one uh, and keep one of them whole. Um, I would recommend maybe don't disassemble your, like your favorite pen that's been passed down through generations of your family in case you can't get it back together again. Um, you can get cheap packs of pens like at the dollar store. Um, again, I don't really care. Um, I don't, if you wanna disassemble it and then put it back together and just like have the one pen, that's fine. Um, but yeah, um, so you're gonna, again, take, uh, take orthographics of the pen that's assembled. Um, make sure if you only have one pen that you take as many pictures as possible from as many angles as possible so you can see how the thing fits together in case you rip it apart and then cannot get it back together again. Um, you do want that reference Again, just to have it in case you need to reference it. Um, and then you want to, again, orthographics of each individual piece of the pen. Um, make sure that all of your orthographics you take are clear and at a reasonable angle. Um, so again, I don't care if you use cell phone pictures, just make sure that they're actually clear. Um, I know a lot of times, especially for like tiny objects, it's really hard to get um, close up pictures. So I would, I would rather have a image where the object is in focus and slightly smaller in the screen than super close and blurry where you can't see it, if that makes sense. Because um, you do need to actually model from these. Um, but yeah. Um, you also, as you go, want to keep track of where the pieces actually disassemble. Um, it might be a terrible I not be a terrible idea if you are working from a single pen and you don't have duplicates to like take a video of yourself disassembling it. Uh, maybe make yourself a little chart of the pieces just again. So if you need to, you can reference like, oh crap, like where did that one piece go? Um, and then again, just model all the pieces um, that you can pull apart. You totally don't need to rip apart like the inkwell. Um, they're usually clear and you don't need to stain all your stuff with inks. You should be able to sort of like see what you need in that inkwell. Um, but you do wanna make sure that you model all of the pieces on the inside and outside of the pens, so like the grip, little springs, all the things that make the pens work. Um, and then once I set, if, I, if you move your objects and I snap everything back to zero, um, it should basically reassemble itself into a pen. Um, I'll go over that again in a sec. But, um, and then you're gonna render the pen. Uh, I want two renders of the assembled pen and two renders of a quote unquote exploded pen, um, which would be something maybe like uh, this hideous thing. Um, this is gonna be the literal ugliest pen. Just, why is it square? Um, all right, so. So say maybe that you have this, and then here's, like I said, this is, this is gonna be super ugly, but you get the point. Um, all right, so if this is your pen, your pen in all its glory, um, ideally, like this, again, this would be a hollow tube with like pen innards in it. Um, you're gonna have way more pieces than this, otherwise, ew. Um, so an exploded view of this pen would basically be um, this, and then, you oh, wow, that's, really long. Um, all right, close enough. Um, exploded view would basically be something like, you know, you move this up and you render it so you can see all of the individual parts sort of like separated, if that makes sense. Um, and then the thing about me wanting to be able to zero all these objects out and have them go back to their assembled position. Um, so uh, you'll notice like right now that there's translates and scales on all of these cylinders. Um, once you have everything modeled and assembled, um, you're gonna wanna go back, select all your objects, um, and just do uh, right click in here and do freeze all. 
Um, we're going to bare minimum freeze translate and rotate. Um, and that's going to basically say wherever this is now is, if you enter zero, it's where I'm going to snap it back to. So like if I go to this, render my exploded view, and I'm like, awesome. I'll zero this out. It's going to pop back into the correct position, if that makes sense, instead of going all the way back to the origin. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I just right click, uh, if you right click anywhere in the channel box, it'll give you that option. Um, there's also this weird little snowflake button here with like zero, zero, zero that'll freeze all of your stuff as well. Um, any more questions on that? Cool. Um, freezing. So um, also when you're done modeling pretty much anything, um, you should really be ideally freezing the transformations. I kind of fudge that one sometimes because I like being able to edit my stuff. But um, uh, delete the history on your object. Um, I did notice like a lot of times um, for rendering turntables uh, last quarter, uh, if, if the history wasn't deleted, sometimes as the thing was spinning, objects would like float off into the distance randomly. Um, and like pretty much, I think all of the time, like deleting history fixed that. Don't know why that happens, but like delete history on your object. Um, it's generally good practice. Um, the only time usually I wouldn't want to freeze rotation is like, again, if I, if I maybe I like rotated the door to be slightly open and I wanted to be able to close that door, have it go back to like exactly 90 degrees, then I would just leave it, uh, leave it as is, because then I can uh, zero it back out to the closed position, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, so that's all I mean when I say like exploded view of your pen. Um, it's basically just like expand the pen. If you want to like move, you know, have like the outer part here and then like the inner part next to it or whatever, like do whatever space efficient kind of makes sense for your pen and your render. Um, yeah. Uh, any questions on that? Cool. Um, all right. So again, two renders of assembled pen, two renders of exploded pen. Um, and then you're going to duplicate those renders and overlay wireframes onto them. Um, I'll go over really quick, um, once we go back into Maya, how to uh, render wireframes and composite them onto an image. Um, and there's a tutorial on Learn about how to do that in Redshift and RenderMan as well, um, should you happen to use this. For some reason, Teacher Station right now doesn't seem to have Redshift. Um, so yeah. Um, so again, so model expectations. Um, I mentioned this before, but like everything should have thickness, even like a really thin piece of metal. It shouldn't be just like a one-sided plane. Um, it should just like simplest way to add thickness to an object, just take the whole thing and just extrude it. Um, it'll basically turn into like a thick little shell piece. Um, and then you're going to try to model, shoot for modeling every detail on the pen that you can. So threads, bumps, springs, like the little bit of lead, um, if you're using a mechanical pencil. Um, and get as much detail as you humanly possibly hum get as much detail as humanly possible in. Um, if you have like a, a weird grip on your pen or pencil that has like weird lumpy designs, like do your best to model those in. Um, that's actually one reason I showed you Pope because a lot of times pens and stuff have weird grips on them. Um, but yeah, um, entire thing should be smoothable. Um, sorry, game kids. Um, I know, <laughs> um, which actually reminds me. Um, Pretty much everything you make for this class should be smoothable unless otherwise specified. Um, with the exception of like pretty much most of the extra credits, I don't care if you do low poly. Um, just because like I know it's good to it's good to practice that, especially if you're game kids. Um, similarly, if you're anim kids and like want to experiment with low poly modeling, like go for it on the extra credit. Um, I fell in love with it. It's really nice to not have to add extra edge loops to smooth things. Um, and then again, render should be on some kind of background. Bare minimum is a gray plane. Um, ideally, well, actually for this one, I don't really care if it's textured, gray plane is fine. Um, but please at least put it on a gray plane. Um, and then what to submit, um, just uh, shoot me the uh, eight renders mentioned above right here. Um, and then a Maya file with two versions of your object, uh, one exploded and one assembled. Um, and for, for that, basically, you just like, like, here's your exploded and here's your assembled one. Um, Um, instead of leaving it as like key, key cylinder one or whatever, just like grab these guys and group it and be like, explode. Uh, and I'm just doing control G to group these. Uh, assembled. Um, this is like pretty much all I want. Um, just groups of your stuff. Um, you can leave, again, leave the pieces uh, separate. Um, I, I actually prefer that in, instead of doing something like a mesh combine. 
because um, again, this is going to get rid of all of your like translate and stuff, translate information and things. Um, and it's just kind of like better practice to leave things uh, separate where possible. Um, any questions about that? Cool, cool. Um, and also submit to me all of the orthographics of your assembled pen and the pieces of the unassembled pen. Um, for unassembled pen, it's probably good, a good idea to take individual orthographics for each individual piece, if I didn't say that, um, instead of like laying them all out and trying to do like a bulk uh, thing. Um, and again, um, pretty much everything should be like 1920 by 1080 PNG or TIFF. Um, all of that like really like kind of pedantic information is in the uh, general submission guidelines. Um, if you're if you're ever wondering about that, um, I think that's pretty much everything. Um, so any questions on that assignment? Awesome. Um, that was super creepy. Um, all right. Yes. Um, so, yeah. Um, so there's like two different ways to accomplish that. Um, if you're rendering an individual image, um, like say, oh god, this is going to be horrendous. Actually, well, whatever. Um, all right. I'm going to do. I'm going to do the thing I said to not do and just throw in a dome light because I want light in here. Um, but like, if I render this uh, and then you save it, um, open up your image settings. This is again for individual frames. Um, and you want to make sure that you check color managed image instead of raw image. If you save it as a raw image, it's going to do that weir weird thing where it's like seven shades darker than you want it. Um, if you do this, it's going to save pretty much exactly how it does in the viewport. Um, so, um, so that's how you handle individual renders. If you're doing a batch render, um, the dumbest, tackiest way I've found to fix this, um, and this is at least with Arnold, um, which is mostly what I was using last quarter. Um, if you save it as, dear God, anything but ESRs, um, save it as a float32. Um, it saves more color information in it. Um, so you're going to have, um, with that, you should have ideally less like weird compression and stuff. It'll give you like more information if you need to edit stuff later. Um, and it also won't save it out super darker. Um, if anyone knows a better way to fix this, please let me know. Um, I am admittedly, so like for the work I usually do is like modeling for 3D printing. It doesn't require a lot of rendering. Um, so I can like use, I can pretty much use all of these engines and stuff um, and do like some like troubleshooting. But it's uh, like, again, if anyone knows like quick hacks or whatever that I'm not aware of, like don't be afraid. Just be like, there's totally a better way to do that. Um, I like learning about these weird things with you guys. Um, but yeah, but I have found that, again, saving it as a TIFF float 32 um, does prevent that weird issue from happening. Um, any other questions about that? Huzzah, huzzah. Um, all right, so.